what nice things did we used to have, until they got ruined by idiots. I used to work at Tim Hortons and we were located right beside a homeless shelter, so every night, we would take all the food that was still fresh and give it to charity. It wasn't a lot, usually like a box or timbits and about a dozen donuts, until one day, the regional manager came and shut the whole thing down. He didn't tell us why, only to never do it again or we will be fired. We never questioned it and just held the resentment of Tim Hortons in our hearts. Like how cheap do you have to be that you would rather have us throw away consumable food. A few months later a homeless man came in right as we were throwing food in a garbage bag. He goes, oh it's such a pity, I used to love eating your guys donuts until that freaking idiot had to ruin it. My co-worker said, yeah that's honestly fricked up corporation greed you know the homeless man gave us a weird look he goes nah that's not what happened one of the fuckheads at the shelter faked choking on a timbit and tired to sue this store that's why they cut us off i went to college in nyc and my school's dining halls used to do this to eliminate food waste and cut down on food insecurity in the area but then someone claimed the food made them sick and tried to sue so that was the end of that my parents old apartment had this little dog park. Our greyhound loved it because she could go run every morning. They closed it because people wouldn't pick up their dog's poop. They would just leave piles of crap. Despite management sending letters out. I'm still salty about that one. Don't get a dog if you can't pick up their messes. Very dumb and minor. But I think it goes to show how selfish people can be. A few years ago a guy on Twitter shared his Starbucks card information and told people to put it on their phones. The idea was to have a shared community card thing. Get a drink if you wanted to or donate to it so others could get a drink. You would think that people would just grab free drinks, but it actually had a surplus of donations versus people actually using it. I think the card ended up with like $200 at some point. Anyway, some butthole comes along and locks the card account, effectively shutting it down. He said he did it because he wanted to prove how ineffective sharing was or something dumb like that. You always have that one guy who sees other people enjoying something and feels the need to disrupt it. I'm going to prove that people are horrible by being horrible. I used to be able to walk into an airport, book a flight, walk to the gate and get on the plane. I have flown from SFO, where I live, to LAX where my sister lives, countless times in just that fashion. And not to mention you used to be able to meet people at the gate as they arrived, or go in with them and have a meal before seeing them off. Security took about 30 seconds to get through. Drones. All it takes is a few idiots doing stupid illegal crap like spying on people and legislators jump at the chance to restrict them. To be fair, the government used drones for spying first. We used to keep our church doors open 24 stroke 7. But then vandals wrecked that so we locked up at night. Then we left it open during the days on Saturdays and vandals wrecked that. So now we keep the place locked up except almost exclusively during banking hours and Sundays mornings. My church was having a Halloween plus Saints of the World event and the doors were open. Kids had booths where they told the story about their sin or whatever and in another part of the lobby there were free snacks and stuff with a donation box next to it. Somebody stole all the donation money college books my dad spent dollar sign 50 per semester and my great uncle spent dollar sign 20 i've spent 500 dollars i know inflation bumps up the price every few years but jesus have the buttholes in the industry been freaking us over a lot of books can be found through torrents but don't pirate them i would never tell you to do that just sharing general information surprisingly not wikipedia it just seems like one of those things where vandalism should have won over the wish to have a public, well-cited, crowdsourced and relying on contributors' knowledge base. I'm very happy about this. Burning Man used to be a really cool, inclusive mini-society. Now it's just a bunch of people with way too much money, isolating themselves from other people in the desert by buying out huge plots of land, and excluding others from their clubhouses. Which is a stark contrast from what Burning Man was freaking supposed to be in the first place. I think this happened with festivals in general. Very materialistic and look how much fun it looks like I'm having on social media. Our parents had a small summer cabin on a quiet, wooded lake. 
The water was pristine and ideal for fishing and swimming. The air smelled of fresh pine. Then it caught on, and the lake became overtaxed and ruined with powerboats, polluted with gasoline, oil, and junk tossed into the water, tires, mattresses, washing machines, solvents, etc. Now, the fish are gone, the water stinks, and the pine trees have been cut down. Playground equipment, the roly slides, teeter totters, the merry go rounds, and there was even a park I used to play in as a kid that had an old, retired train car we could go in. The roly slides apparently pinched too many fingers, the teeter totters were too hard to get off of, and the merry go rounds were spun too fast. As for the train, I'm pretty sure there were people shooting up drugs and or homeless people sleeping in it. Plus graffiti, now it's gated off and no fun for anyone. I miss merry-go-rounds, there used to be one at a local park, it was my favorite as a kid, yes, older kids would spin it too fast and the little ones would go flying on mayo but damn it we liked it that way. A sense of community in your neighborhood. As a kid, second grade-ish. I used to walk over to my friends and went play in each other's backyards. We learned how to bike together, would explore the woods between yards, play with the older middle schoolers. A lot of paranoia kinda ended that. The DC sniper shooting, fear of kidnappers, it all kinda hit at once. Well that and cicada season. After that summer people around here kinda kept to themselves more. This does still exist in places. Just moved to a neighborhood from the country and my son is basically reliving my childhood in the 80s. It makes me so happy. Movie theaters. Etiquette is absolutely dead. My once greatest joy is dead to me because people are inconsiderate buttholes who feel they can act like they're at home and ruin it for others. I've incorporated a projector and a screen into my man cave and never looked back. eBay used to be this amazing multinational garage sale. Filled to the brim with people selling their used stuff. Then people started filling it with garbage no brand products and drop shipping it to the winning bidders. Then came the people that started using it as a storefront and charging full retail value for nib items. But now eBay is nothing more than resellers that find it more affordable than developing an actual web store. Leaving me scratching my head wondering why people don't just order it from Amazon for $20 less. Or walk to a big box store and buy it for the same price without shipping nor a wait. I've permanently checking the use button and the search results have been far better. But there's still people that keep the original box and try to sell it in like new condition for full retail. A smooth experience at the airport. Used to be able to walk through a simple metal detector and that was it. Empty your pockets and you're good. Want to meet your family at the gate? That's fine. Want to walk your loved one to the plane? That's fine too. Now we basically have body cavity searches and have to deal with rude agents who hate their jobs and would rather be anywhere else in the world. It sucks. Don't forget the theft and the fact that they continually fail to find the crap they are supposed to during tests. Hitchhiking. When my parents were growing up in the 60s and 70s it was normal here, in the middle of a city, to grab a ride from a stranger you might not have known. Someone went around murdering people they picked up and all of a sudden it became illegal to hitchhike. Minor auto accidents, fender benders, when people shrugged, exchanged insurance info, and got the damage fixed. Now too many people call a personal injury attorney and try to get all the money they deserve for injuries that don't amount to anything. Plus, the insurance companies just total everything because of rampant auto body fraud. YouTube used to be about uploading amateur videos. Old school YouTubers put out quality content as well. Now it's all corporate, with companies promoting their stuff, and majority of the content being crap. Those fun rock hiding groups on Facebook. In the beginning you'd paint a rock and hide it for someone to find. There were so many fun designs. Sometimes you'd find a rock from way out of state. It was thrilling in its own sweet little way. And then people started imposing new rules on the group. You can't hide rocks with glitter or stickers or googly eyes because it might make a squirrel want to swallow one. They'd jump down the throat of anyone who posted to the group with a glittery rock. You were not allowed to hide a rock in a business because someone might think it was solicitation. Suddenly all the fun animal themed rocks hidden around the zoo were against the rules. And heaven help you if you got caught. Middle aged women can be mean. 
Fights began to break out over designs, claiming they they were stolen from someone else. The entire thing turned into a cesspool of he said, she said and ugh ignorant people doing their rocks wrong. Now the groups only consist of a few people who beg others to hide rocks because they don't know why the magic is gone. This sounds just like playing some new game in elementary school. It's fun for several weeks and then new people who come ruin the game and you have to come up with a new one. There used to be an annual free garage sale near me. People would bring in boxes of things to donate. Volunteers would set them out on tables. And everyone could take what they wanted. Then a couple of people pretended to be volunteers and loaded the boxes of donations directly into their own cars. A lot was also stolen from the church that hosted the event, including the stool from their organ. They no longer have the free garage sale. I belong to a small, local 24 hour gym. They used to have small white towels, hand sized, that you could use while you worked out. There was a laundry basket you could throw them in as you were leaving. They weren't great quality, in fact they were rather rough from being washed every day, but they were nice to wipe down your treadmill, wipe your face, etc. Last month I enter the gym and there's a sign stating that they are no longer stocking the towels because people are stealing them. WTF. Why would anyone steal these small, scratchy towels? It's probably the gym rats who forget to put them in the basket and now have a huge collection in their trucks. Pisses me off. Inhalers. My bestie who had asthma used to be able to get inhalers without going through the counter when he was a kid and he needed it desperately. Now they quit selling them over the counter and you need a prescription because druggy got a drug. I imagine a lot of different kinds of medicines ended up this way. VH1. They used to have great shows like Behind the Music, Pop-Up Video and Classic Albums. Plus they made some really good original movies as well. Then literally overnight they turned into E. But only stupider if that's even possible. We used to have a small state park where I live. It was a little hole in the ground in the middle of farm country. There was a waterfall, tons of crazy rock formations and climbing walls, as well as rare plants and trees as far as the eye can see. It was beautiful. Then stoners and hippies took over the place, spray painted on all of the rock formations, and moved any rocks and boulders that could be to spell a big 4 stroke 20 in the place's gazing field. Baggies and cans litter the waterfall to the point where the entire waterfall looks like a fountain of trash. You can't step two feet in any direction without seeing a can, bottle, pipe, or needle. It's really sad. The last time I went, my friends and I left in tears. It was devastating. I don't know if the park is still there or if anyone around there is on Reddit, but I know the Outreas subreddit is doing a stoner initiative to clean up smoke spots. Maybe posting in there where it is, separate or throw away account. Someone could go and tidy it up a bit. Back in 90s in Turkey, when you were drunk and thought you couldn't make it back home, you'd call 155, police hotline, and tell them who you were and your whereabouts. They had to send a cop to pick you up from where you were and give you a lift to your home, so you wouldn't DUI or get robbed or whatever. Islamists came in power and ruined everything for the rest of the country. Similarly, my dad tells me stories about how when he was my age he'd flag a policeman down when he was staggering home drunk and they'd drive him to the top of the hill, near his house. It was a pain to turn around any further, so he'd get home safe. His buddies did the same. Everyone knew the cops and the cops knew them. This was a small town in the US in the early 70s. Try to do that now. Pensions, retirement and having a career with a company for more than 10 years. Stupid boomers, greedy corporate buttholes and crappy government ruined all that for everyone. In Australia there are were a series of giant inland lakes in the desert, collectively known as Menindi Lakes. Beautiful, natural diverse ecosystems, fun people activities, and genuinely wondrous. Then the Australian government sold farm upriver to water intensive overseas cotton farms and didn't restrict their water use. The river started flowing in reverse. Menindi lakes almost never fill anymore. Cotton and rice farming should never have happened in Australia and it is criminal how it has been allowed to happen. Affordable health care insurance. I now pay $700 after tax monthly premium for a third tier healthcare plan that I try my best not to use due to the cost co-payments. 
and I am very concerned about what the coverage will cost in 2019. Don't forget the $6,000 deductible. Wine tasting. It used to be that if you were planning a nice dinner or picking up wine for holiday meals, or for whatever reason, you would go to the winery and they would suggest pairings for you. You would taste a few samples and then buy the bottle. S. You wanted. Or you would politely tell them you are going to try a different winery. The word got out that wine tasting is free and every shithead who wanted to get drunk for free showed up. Nowadays every winery in California charges for tastings and instead of having a nice experience, you have to fight yuppies and their dates, bachelorette parties screaming and wooing, etc, for space at the bar. I had a very different experience when visiting in-laws in Germany. The winemakers were very quick to open any bottle I was interested in and pour a very generous tasting glass. I know nothing about wine and all the bottles were gifts, and he knew that, but he was still adamant that he wanted me to taste his wine. It was almost a pride for him. Fandoms. Used to be, there could be big fandoms without fights and ships were just for fun and no one trying to harass people into making them canon. I don't care if my ship doesn't become canon. I will freaking ship it anyways. People used to read the articles and be informed. Now I feel like people skip to the comments to get the gist of what was actually written said. So whoever invented the comments section ruined reading. A lot of articles are crap to read now though a lot of fluff added just to increase average time a user spends on the site. The comfort of knowing that your children were safe from polio and smallpox and measles because people vaccinated their kids, because of course people vaccinated their kids because duh. Decades of science brought low by a play by playmate. Give it a minute to let that really sink in. Being a kid, time was you could roam around your neighborhood. Ride your bike to a nearby park, explore the woods behind your house, or whatever. On a typical summer day, you'd get kicked out of your house and told to come home when the streetlights came on. You had freedom to roam and explore and create and play, and yes to get beat up by bullies and chased by stray dogs and maybe fall down and cut yourself. But you were free to explore and learn and figure crap out on your own, and it was awesome. Now, we have the norm, at least in the US that children ought to be under adult supervision every minute of every day. We take them from one supervised activity to the next, handing them off like some kind of nuclear code briefcase. Parents are afraid to leave their kid in the car while they run into the store for a few minutes because someone might call the police on them, and they couldn't have been charged with a crime. This is ludicrous to me, all things being equal. It's one thing to leave your kid sat in the car reading a book or playing a game on his tablet when weather is a concern. That could be neglect or abuse if it's too hot, for instance. But if it's in the shade and it's a cool 65F out and you're just picking up grandma's prescription real quick, I just don't understand. I don't get helicopter parenting, and how it came to be the norm, to the point parents can be charged with actual crimes for doing nothing more than letting their kid alone for a few minutes. It's just baffling to me. My hometown turned a recently vacant bus depot into a street art center. The walls were open to be painted on. You could do events there, and it was open normal park hours. Dusk till dawn usually. Within the first months or so of being open it was covered with all sorts of art. Then towards the end of the summer during the first year, some kids beat the security guard with their skateboards. Been closed since as far as I know. I moved away a few years ago. Facebook. I'm not saying it was amazing but it was so different my freshman year of college. It was fun to upload photos and connect with people you met in class, etc. Now there are a ton of middle aged people with their political opinions, on both sides, and acting like they're better than everyone who is mourning Mac Miller. While you're crying over this celebrity, I'm thinking of the three veterans who commit suicide every day, repost to show you care. Just really sick of all of my aunts and uncles on Facebook with their stupid opinions. ETA. Obviously I can unfriend those people and I have. I'm just saying the whole vibe of the site is different. Maybe it's just me getting old but I'll take first day of school pictures over politics and buy my MLM crap any day. Driving. Now there's too many dang people on the road, most of whom do not need to be licensed to drive, that cannot use common sense, move along, follow traffic, and understand that they are not the only vehicle trying to get somewhere.
No one drives in New York City. There's too much traffic. Reddit. People are stupid. And they are still stupid on Reddit. I still see so much of that old pat yourselves on the back don't we know better than the prowls attitude here. Like the average user is some educated techie as if this is 2006 and Reddit is some underground site. Acting like the user base is anything more than a hive of idiots is ridiculous at this point. Reddit is currently the 15th most trafficked site in the world. That's incredible. Mainstream popularity. And it brings in everyone. People who use this site aren't smart or interesting or unusual for doing it. If they ever were. Getting advice from Reddit? Doubt its value. It probably comes from someone stupid. How about Reddit's opinions? Likely to be a rational group think with a healthy dose of corporate foreign astrotifying. Speaking of astrotifying, the profit influence potential of a website this popular is immense. And everyone knows it. Reddit got so upset about not being able to monetize their popularity as well as they wanted that they pushed a terrible redesign exclusively to pack the site full of ads and banned various controversial groups to sanitize the site for advertisers. They're turning this site into a Facebook with messaging, profiles and everything, solely to pander to those users and bring in advertising dollars. And the sad part is it's going to work because that's been proven to be extremely lucrative. And because the new reddit is populated by average users who live for that format. This site is near ruined. When I first became aware of it 11 years ago it was small. Discussion was good. Most of the users were there to escape from the burgeoning popular sites which were full of the mass marketed drivel that now pervades reddit. Because it has now itself been engulfed by the Facebook machine. We're going to need a new alternative for a few years before the exact same thing happens. As it always does to something small but interesting that gets popular and attracts the attention of interest groups and average internet users. And NBSP. To be fair, this complaint basically goes for the entire internet. You're right. Your comment has enlightened me and I now assume based on this lesson that you're an idiot too. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.